Raise your hand if you think you know what the image behind me is. All right, what do you think? Uh, Sufi dancer from Turkey. Okay. If you didn't know <laughs> the my speech, who is Sufi is, would you have known that? Yeah. I did. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, you're right. This is a. Uh, it's kind of a traditional Sufi dancer. Um, they spin around in circles in the hopes to get closer to God. And uh, my speech today is about Islamic Sufism, and so I'm going to go over various aspects of that. So here's kind of my agenda for the speech. All right, again, I'm going to cover what is Sufism, give you a, a quick overview of Islam, uh, go over the developmental development and expansion, specifically within Somalia, because that's the focus of my research and thesis work, and then go over the differences between the different sects, and then some controversies that have arisen through this. All right, so a brief overview of Islam. These tenets of Islam are adhered to across the board, um, regardless of what sect you're in. So they believe the Quran is the holy book, um, God's, God's words to us people. The five pillars of Islam are, the first one is faith in God, the statement at the bottom is, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That's number one. Then prayer five times a day towards the city of Mecca, which is the most holiest city, most holy city in Islam. Fasting during the month of Ramadan, which is about a 28-day period. Then almsgiving to the poor, and a pilgrimage to Mecca called the Hajj. And then Sharia law is kind of the code of living that is talked about within the Quran. All right, here are some of the divisions that exist within Islam, like Christianity, Judaism, any other religion in the world. There are varying divisions within the religion, different ideologies. And so the main ones are Sunnism on the top left, Shia Islam in the center, and then Sufism is kind of, in some ways, its own um, distinct element within Islam. But I'll, I'll go into more details as we go. All right. Okay, so here is just an overview, a map of kind of how those divisions are split up across primarily the Middle East. Uh, into Asia, into Africa, and moving into Europe. Um, <clears throat> Sufism originally developed around the 11th century, and it was a reactionary movement against both imperial Islam of the Muslim dynasties and the rigid formalism of Islam's orthodox learned class. Uh, in some ways, uh, Sufism is described as Islamic mysticism. It's kind of a combination of local, um, kind of ancient, ancestral worship, religious practices, and kind of the conventional Islamic teachings that come from the, the Quran. All right, so as I mentioned, Sufism more or less developed around the 11th century. Um, this is when it became ordered and crystallized into specific orders that also aligned with other specific orders within the Sunni Islam division. Um, those, those orders have continued to the present day. So this map de depicts Sufism beginning in the Mesopotamian region, basically where modern day Iraq is, um, and then spreading out from there into Africa and Asia, and even down into Sumatra, Indonesia area. All right, here are some typical images of what a Sufi master is. And a Sufi master, um, another name for it is an imam, just like the other sects of Islam. It's a teacher, one who imparts their wisdom and knowledge into disciples or followers or students to perpetuate the religion. So they... Again, because it's, it's mixed with traditional 
local practices and has a mystic, mystical mysticism flavor to it. There's, there's a wide range of practices and in some ways it kind of reminded, reminds me of kind of the gypsy movement with various degrees of adherence and uh, practices. So again, here are the whirling dervishes that exist primarily in the tur tur in Turkey today. Uh, and again, they spin around uh, in the hopes to get closer to God. One last thing on this. So a quote from Reza Aslan in one of the books that I um, used to study Sufism. It says, as a religious movement, Sufism is characterized by a medley of divergent philosophical and religious trends, as though it were an empty cauldron into which have been poured the principles of Christian monasticism, Hindu asceticism, along with a sprinkling of Buddhist and Tantric thought, a touch of Islamic Gnosticism and Neoplatonism, and finally a few elements of Shiism, Manichaeism, and Central Asian shamanism thrown in for good measure. So one might, one might call this a kludge of components, religious components. However, I think that would, that's just one person's opinion of that. All right, so because my thesis research focuses on Somalia, I, I kind of focused on Sufism within Somalia. So the image on the left is more or less a traditional school environment for studying Sufism. And then this also gets into the controversies. On the right, the picture is a more traditional Sunni or Shia uh, Islamic school. There's a lot more money that's involved in these. And uh, uh, this, this form of Islam is taking over within Somalia because of the money factor. So again, here's a this uh, picture of the mosques that have existed uh, or that exist in the two forms. So in conclusion, I went over the basic tenets of Islam, uh, the more specific focus on Sufi Islam, and then a couple of the controversies that exist. And I hope to uh, inspire you to uh, do further research on your own if you're interested in this form or any form of religion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and Gordon in particular. Uh, connecting Sufism to understanding your leadership style uh, was not only inspiring and informative, but in my humble opinion, rather brilliant, considering all the confusion around the branches and denominations. This number five innovative planning speech requires the speaker to identify leadership styles, recognize their own, in an effort to understand how their behavior may impact those they're leading. So not only did Gordon meet those requirements, he made it easy for us to follow how important it is for us to analyze and understand the purpose of effective leadership and how our inner lives combined with our intention can successfully affect positive outcomes. So, bravo. So, for example, you immediately engaged us by leaving us with a question, asking us if we recognize the picture of the whirling dervish. I recognize the picture, but I didn't see the connection. So, right out of the gate, you gave us a connection uh, to the spiritual aspect, right out of the gate. What you referred to as a kludge later on, I would even go so far as to say you gave us more of an eclectic conspectus. Uh, for an opportunity for improvement, it's hard for me to go there. I loved everything you did. I, I would say um, I'd like to hear more of um, Sufi wisdom, so an example of Sufi wisdom, and perhaps some differences between the various branches of denomination and um, more about how you, uh, how you assess your leadership style, your style. Um, 
I was particularly impressed with your vocal tone, uh, steady delivery, and non-reliance on your notes. Well done. Plus, your use of hand gestures and uh, calling our attention to your, uh, to your PowerPoint. So I appreciate how you tie, tie together the practice of Sufism and its intention of getting at the truth via spirituality and devotion to the step-by-step -step process, the practicality and well-oiled system of Toastmasters. So my antennas are up for your next speech. Thank you.